Welcome to the Intelligent Investing Podcast, where modern portfolio theory can suck it. A student of the school of Graham and Doddsville and a clergy member of the Church of Warren Buffett, here's your host, Eric Schlein. Hi, this is Eric Schlein. You're listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast. And today I wanted to talk about a company called True Panion. For full disclosure, uh, I am a shareholder in the company. Uh, most of my investors are shareholders in the company through uh, Granite State Capital Management. So I do have a position. Uh, everything I say is not a buy or sell recommendation, nor am I giving any advice. And on top of that, I could sell or buy more at any time without any notice. So with that, with that out of the way, I wanted to discuss the, some of the recent uh, news articles going on around True Panion. Uh, the, Seeking Alpha, the Seeking Alpha articles I find incredibly misleading. And there was a recent blog post of an investor, uh, a fund, that owns or owned stock in the company they recently sold due to some fears that they had. What I don't understand is these people say they've done all this research on the company and you can literally spend an hour of time and realize that what these articles and blog posts are saying, a lot of it is incorrect. Not an opinion, just actually factually incorrect. So I just wanted to bring up some issues. There was an article from Seeking Alpha, for instance, uh, on August 12th, 2019. And the author just named the capitalist, so don't even know his name. But the capitalist uh, writes this article saying uh, True Panion $8 price target, adverse selection exposed in filings. Now that sounds really terrifying. Now, for some of you who don't know uh, how bad the term adverse selection is in the insurance industry, basically it's where uh, the healthy, you know, the healthy group leaves and you're left with just the sick people. So the theory for adverse selection, say at a vet hospital, would be the healthy pets don't wanna pay for insurance anymore, really the healthy pet owner, since dogs and cats don't have their own finances, and you're left with just the sick pets. And what ends up happening is your only clients are the sickest ones, and now you start mounting up all these uh, insurance claims and uh, you know, your loss ratios go through the roof and you go bankrupt. So for an insurance company, adverse selection is like one of the most horrible things that could put a company out of business. So it's actually pretty terrifying when you read this article and it says that Trupanion is launching a more cost competitive product in Florida with the dramatic change of including up to a 50% coinsurance meaning that your penny would only pay 50% of the claim. And then they say, um, oh yeah, so then he goes, although I have repeatedly commented on the non-competitive nature of the true penny offering and the lack of growth that it is causing, the company has maintained that it's quote, business as usual, which by the way it is. I'm saying that he didn't say that and I'm assuming it's a he, like maybe it's a she, I don't know because the person doesn't say who they are. Then this person, the capitalist, goes, a Florida filing shows that True Panion is highlighting adverse selection as a key driver for requesting approval of this new offering. True Panion claims that it's True Panion Express software that allows vet assistants to send insurance offerings to customers at checkout as a key differentiator. Well, that is true. It appears, as bears have long suggested, that selling insurance in the emergency room 
poses serious risk for adverse selection and that True Panion is trying to pivot its offerings because of that risk. Now, it's interesting that the company is highly shorted and it also seems interesting that the stock price tends, there, there was a few months ago this happened as well, where the stock price plummeted and it just so happened to be around the time where all these negative articles on Seeking Alpha came out. Now, I don't really care. I actually kind of like it. And I, I, the more short sellers, the better. Because I lend out my shares and I lend out the shares for my investors. So right now on an inter interactive brokers, the, the borrow rate to short true opinions, I think it's about 10%. And interactive brokers gives clients half that money. So I'm, in essence, getting a 5% return on any shares that I lend out. Uh, for both my and my investors' accounts. So the more people shorting, the higher the interest rate goes. That being said, this adverse selection idea is not actually accurate. So it is true that in the Florida filing, they have put this adverse selection claim, but there's a reason they're doing that. It's a new product. They don't have as much data. Uh, a lot of these vet hospitals are in rural parts of Florida, and they're just testing this out. Now, it's possible with this new product that it's not going to work out, and they'll scrap it. Trupanion does experiments from time to time. Now, the company thinks it's going to work out. We'll see what happens. But they're putting the adverse selection in there as a disclosure due to the lack of data. The company doesn't actually think uh, they're going to have an adverse selection problem, but it's part of the, just the regulatory filing that they kind of have to do it. And they're being as cautious as possible uh, where you know the company uh, understands that the Florida insurance regulator uh, tends to be pretty strict. And if they can make this work in Florida, uh, they can make this work in most of the rest of the country. Now, that's why they put it in the filing. Like, not that they actually think that will happen. They're just saying it's a risk. The other thing is if you look at True Panion's current product, adverse selection has not been an issue. In fact, the thesis of the company and the company is very open about this, is people who take their pets to the vet tend to give more of a shit about their pet, meaning they probably take better care of their pet than the average pet owner. That kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So, I, I mean, I can give you an anecdote. I grew up with, you know, I've, I've had now two dogs in my life, and those dogs were were always taken to the vet, and we took really good care of those dogs. My brother had a cat named Oreo. Kind of psycho, that guy, but I think all cats are kind of psycho, personally. With cats, well, I'm not going to go on a rant with cats, but my brother would take that cat to the vet, and like my, that cat was on like dialysis and had kidney issues the entire you know, span of its life, and my brother would give it injections every night. I mean... Literally, for a freaking cat. You know, and, and he looked at Oreo as his brother. He's an interesting dude. Actually, very cool, very smart. So, what I'm saying is the adverse selection, time and time again, has shown not to uh, be true in the vet hospitals. And why it's so important uh, around the vet hospitals, it's the veterinarians that are you know, letting people, letting their clients know, letting their patients, I don't know what you call them, letting the, their dog and cat owners know about True Panion because it works out for the vets, it works out for the customers. It's a win-win across the board. I'm, and I'm not going to go into the True Panion thesis too much. That could be for another episode. So the adverse selection fear is not only overblown, it's irrelevant. 
And on top of that, there's another argument of, well, Trupin runs the risk that over time the healthy pets are going to leave because if they're healthy, you know, true pain is not cheap. They're the best value, but they're not cheap. There are things at Costco that are not cheap, but they tend to be the best value. So true pain is, is always about the, you know, the customer value proposition, not about being the cheapest. And I'm going to get to that a little bit later because that's actually very important. So here we have a company and... The best value around, at least they know that. Not everyone knows that um, yet. But this is what's interesting. This idea, this notion that the healthy pet owners aren't going to see the value is ludicrous. And I'll tell you why. Most claims, there's, there's a lot of claims that get filed every month through Trupanion. Most of the claims are only a couple hundred dollars. So we're not talking about a $10,000 heart surgery most of the time. So when pet owners take their pet to the vet and there's a little issue and they file a claim, they get to continuously see the benefits of their policy. They get to see how quick those payouts are. And of course, the veterinarians are incredibly happy because it increases um, it increases the profits of their vet hospitals. It increases revenues of the vet hospitals. And it uh, increases uh, retaining their customers. I cannot tell you how many vets there are where they have a person come in to get their initial checkup with their puppy, and then they never see that guy again. And I've talked to a lot of vets about this issue, and Trupanion is solving that problem. So... That's the adverse selection thing with Seeking Alpha. But then I came across a article from someone who's not a short seller and seems like a genuinely good guy. He actually used to be a former True Panion shareholder, or at least the company he works for uh, did. And it's on a blog, and I'm going to put this in the show notes, called Intrinsic Investing. And the guy, Todd Wenning, who's a CFA, he writes an article... Uh, with uh, through his firm uh, Ensemble Capital. So Intrinsic Investing is the blog for Ensemble Capital. And, you know, he says, as discussed on our fall 2018 conference call, we own shares of pet insurance company Trupanion in our core equity strategy. In July, we sold our shares prior to earnings and wanted to provide an explanation of that decision. Now, I, now, I personally think this explanation not only is weak, but it shows a lack of understanding about certain key parts of this business. Uh, and these seem like pretty smart guys. So, you know, if Ensemble Capital has an issue with this episode or something that I'm saying, let me know and let's talk about it. Um, but, yeah, I'm a little stumped. So, I was reading through this and... You know, they have a few uh, few concerns. So the first big concern is the, the growth of the company. So they say, in recent quarters, however, we have grown concerned about Trupanion's ability to communicate its value to pet owners and win market share. Over the past two years, for example, Trupanion subscription pet growth trailed the industry growth rate as defined by the North American Pet Health Insurance Association, NAFIA, after years of outperformance. And they show a table, which I'll, you'll see if you, if you look at the blog. And they show that the Trupanion subscription pet count in 2018 grew by 15.9%. Compared to the category, you know, the industry of 17.1%. So it's, so it's underperforming, at least according to that table, it's underperforming uh, the industry growth rate. They go on to say, and by the way, this part I actually agree with and, 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 I, still, and I still agree with it, where they say, we, anticip we anticipated an S-curve in North America pet insurance as it becomes more accepted 
by vets and pet owners. Now, just to stop for a second, if, for those who don't, don't know what an S-curve is, it's, it basically shows um, rate of growth in an industry. So you'll, and and they, they look like these like S's. So you know, a company's growing, 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 but then they might either hit a flat line. So they're gonna you know, start investing more money um, and growth starts stalling. And then it picks up again. So if you look at that visually, it looks like an, an S. Uh, and they call it an S curve. And there's there's books about it. It's, it's an interesting concept and, and worth learning about. So, and they go, and that seems to be happening. Yet, true paying subscriber growth has not accelerated in step. In fact, at true paying's recent investor day, management slightly reduced its subscription pet guidance for 2019 2020. And then they go, when there are industry tailwinds of emerging moat companies should further their lead from the pack. Now, then they go, now it could be argued that competitors are underpricing their policies to win share in an unsustainable fashion. Uh, Drew Payne's policies are expensive, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then go into how their payouts work. Now, it's not that that could be an issue. That, that actually is what's going on. So uh, I'll get to that in a second. They also say a major part of our thesis was that True Penion's advantage having, quote, active referral relationships with nearly 10,000 North American vet hospitals and its success at installing its automated claim software, True Penion Express, at 4,000 hospitals, and that other pet insurance, insurance companies have tried to replicate um, their territory partner model and have failed, which was a sign to us that this could be a moat source for true pain. Well, yes, that is, a, that is a sign of a moat. Well, let's continue. While vet offices are not allowed to solicit insurance, true pain's territory partners encourage vets and office staff to start asking new pet owners who their insurance is with and start a conversation about insurance. Um, they say it's a win-win for everyone. So they go into the moat, the culture, blah, 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 blah. And they say... Um, uh, given the industry's rapid growth, we think it's perfectly normal uh, for regulators and insurance companies to have growing pains. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. At, at the end of the day, they say, we, we've lost faith, however, in the company's ability to reach rulemaker status in a highly competitive market where value proposition communication is a challenge. As such, it does no longer fit our definition of, of an emerging mode business, and we decided to sell our stake. Uh, they also they also do, do dismiss short sellers with the regulatory issues. I'm not going to get into that, um, but it, it is bullshit. They also say... Um, you know, the, the, so I mean, ba ba basically they're... Their issue has to do with that the growth is slowing. And then they say, True Payne is likely the first brand on many vets' mind as they talk about pet insurance with new dog and cat owners. Indeed, True Payne management said they believe they are generating most of the industry leads through vets starting conversation about pet insurance. This made us even more concerned about the slowing unit growth rate. Why is Trupanion not outpacing the industry when it is the first name many pet owners hear? It could be that pet owners hear about pet insurance from their vet, go home, compare prices, and choose a more affordable option. It's not an impossible problem for Trupanion to solve, but again, consumers don't typically understand insurance value until they file a claim. Hey, there is so much wrong with this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get into this now. So I, I posted a public rebuttal to a lot of this. Um, one uh, has to do with the slowing growth rates. There was also another issue that was raised in another Seeking Alpha article that there's now these concerns that there, there's, the prices in California are skyrocketing and that this is unsustainable and that they're only doing this to offset loss ratios. I'm going to get into that too. So, so here, here, here's the thing. The price of true paying in stock you know, it, it has recently declined from the mid-30s a share to the low 20s a share. And as I said before, True Penning has very high short interest due to claims of overvaluation. Uh, some people 
who are really lazy, who really don't understand this company, will say, oh, it just trades at a high price to book level. So therefore, it's overvalued. Uh, some people talk about the regulatory concerns, which is literally a non-issue. Um, and I'm not going to get into that because, again, that's a whole other episode. But then, but basically, there's, then there's the big thing, which is that the business model is flawed and unsustainable. Growth is slowing down and their the prices are skyrocketing in California. So every, 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 there's always new stuff coming up. Now, even some longs like Ensemble Capital are selling. I knew another guy also who sold. Uh, actually, two other people now that have sold. Um, and, you know, the, this guy Todd Winning at Ensemble Capital, he's talking about the industry growth rate as defined by the North American Pet Health Insurance Association, which sounds really important and really official, which it is, has slowed after years of outperformance. So... Oh, it's a Monday, Monday afternoon, late afternoon as I'm talking. I'm a little exhausted. So the concerns raised by Ensemble Capital. So, right, Todd shares a few concerns on his blog. So, he, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go concern through concern and then give you my rebuttal. So the first one is Todd assumes that when there are industry tailwinds, most companies with what he refers to as quote emerging modes should be able to continue to gain market share. And recently this hasn't happened with True Penny. And he cites this as a red flag, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, where Todd also explains that True Penny is often the first brand that vet customers hear from their vets, yet True Penny has a slowing growth rate and is not outpacing the industry recently. Um, True Penny has also raised their prices by 150% in California since 2015 with an additional 20% price hike this year. Uh, and there are concerns, and this is from a Seeking Alpha article, there are concerns that this will lead to adverse selection, which is the worst nightmare scenario for any insurers, I was saying at the beginning of this. Healthy pets leaving due to higher prices while the sick pets stay leading to unsustainable losses. So here are the faulty assumptions. There's, there's actually quite a few faulty assumptions here. Um, so yes, it is true that True Penny's subscription growth only grew by uh, just a bit over 15% compared to the industry's 17% growth rate. But this alone doesn't tell the entire story. And this is why if you don't understand a company or an industry and you're just looking at a number on its own, it, no, it sometimes does tell the whole story, but sometimes it doesn't. And with True Penny, it, it, it often doesn't, interestingly enough. So in reality... True pain is actually growing faster than the industry. This is not rocket science. You, this literally took me an hour of not even research because I was just confirming what I already felt. And I'm like, okay, maybe, I, maybe I've been wrong. And I just researched this more. I'm like, nope, this, this is exactly what I've read before. I don't know where these people are coming from. Um, and I'm really trying to get this. So, um, yeah, so true, true pain is actually growing faster than the industry. But you have to compare apples to apples. So... They're growing faster than the industry when you compare similar products in the category. So the thing is, is that, let's look, for example, there's lots of cheap products in the pet insurance marketplace that really are not comparable at all. Um, and then also, some companies are underpricing during a period where the pet insurance category is gaining more, more awareness. The thing is, we've seen this before. Um, I mean, Daryl has talked uh, during investor days in Omaha, for instance, that they've they've had so many competitors come in and then leave in the years that they uh, have been around. So this is you know this is not the first time that you see True Pain uh, sl growing slower than a lot of these other companies. Um, yeah, so I'll give you an example. So. Um, True Penny competitors from time to time will grow faster than the category, uh, and this is due to mispriced policy. So a great example of this is Nationwide. Nationwide grew pretty quickly in grab market share about two years ago. However, Nationwide had to pull back after a year because they couldn't price their product properly. So another example, and this is the this is often considered the big competitor to True Penny, which really isn't. Um, it's a company called Healthy Paws. But let's look, let's actually look at Healthy Paws. So if, if we look at Healthy Paws, 
They've grown pretty quickly. However, if you look at their pricing, they're able to get away with it because they keep switching underwriters and they keep rolling over new pets to new books of business. Healthy Paws recently had to change their product by introducing caps. They're changing their deductible structure to no longer having zero deductibles. And in addition, you see pricing increases at 30% on top of natural age-based pricing factors. So the fact that they are mispriced has now become a problem for Healthy Paws. Inter interesting how that works out. And if you go on their website and you happen to live in Washington, uh, they can't even underwrite policies anymore in that state. So, <laughs> so when you actually look behind the numbers and you start comparing apples to apples, True Pain is actually growing faster. Now, the last thing that I want to get into this is this whole California thing that's been going on. And there's, there was a Seeking Alpha article about that. So Calif California has been getting a lot of attention for True Panion. And this concern is also totally unwarranted and, in my opinion, just blown completely out of proportion. So just like True Panion, let's go back to Healthy Paws for a second. So just like True Panion, Healthy Paws also files in California. Oh, and you can also look at those filings. I don't know why that article didn't seem to mention healthy paws. That's that's interesting. And 34% of pets need more than a 50% pricing increase. So that's the base rate increases plus a plus 15%, which equals a 65% increase. However, California has capped their pricing increase at 50% this year. So the way you win with your insurance category, and, and Daryl will say this is a true opinion, is to price more accurately than your competition. I, I don't. I think that's pretty much like common sense. I would hope that's common sense. So short term, this means you won't always be growing faster, right, due to the ebbing and flowing of the many other pet insurance companies that underwrite their policies. However, this has never been shown to be sustainable, which I think is pretty obvious to most of you. And the economic reality always settles in within a few years. So Trupen is by far the best in the business when it comes to pricing policies accurately to get their 70% target as quickly as they can. And California is no different than what Trupen has disclosed on their main book of business. All, all of this is disclosed and all of this is public. I, I, this is why this, all this stuff baffles me. Nothing would suggest that churn is different in California, despite the massive pricing increases in recent years. So this is interesting. One third of Trupanion customers will interact with the product in the first year. The company processes 80,000 claims a month. And as I said before, the average claim is only a few hundred dollars. So when rates increase, there is increased churn of 20% across their entire book. And California is literally exactly the same. It's no different. And one of the biggest opportunities that Trupanion has publicly talked about uh, is, is, is actually improving those statistics on their first year churn rate. So there's actually going to be improvement. You know, it, it's not going to get worse, but it, it probably will get better knowing how good they are with data. So only, only upside from here. Um, and I think that's a high probability uh, regarding first year churn rate. So the reality, right? is in California, the greatest usage among True Panion customers are specialty and referral hospitals. So that's, for those that don't know what that is, that's like a cancer center, a cardiologist, a urologist, that they actually have this stuff for pets now. It's interesting, right? So these referral hospitals have led to greater True Panion customer population density. And the California market especially has seen large increases in these types of hospitals and the true pain customers are seeing value in them as they can see through claims passing through those hospitals. So all of this stuff um, of these red flags and these concerns about California and slowing growth, it, it just is, do you guys not research this stuff? Uh, so the business model is not broken. I don't, think any of this, quite frankly, should be news. I, I typically don't even like addressing things, but I'm doing it because I feel like I kind of have to. I was actually waiting for an article to come out to be a rebuttal to this stuff, and nothing has come out, so I, I'm doing it. Um, none of this should be news. I think in the two years of me doing this podcast or more now, I don't think I've ever done this before, but I felt I kind of had to. Um, but yeah, the, the panic ensues by those who can't see the context behind the numbers. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm happy uh, for people who, to want to keep shorting. So the shorts, keep shorting. Please short more. 
Um, you know, the, the borrow rate has gone to 10% and hope it goes higher. And that's really it. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, shoot me an email, intelligentinvesting at uh, gmail.com. Uh, or you can contact me, uh, you know, through my website, uh, you know, on Grand State Capital, it's GSCM. That's the O. So yeah, that's 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 the story, and uh, I just wanted to address all this. So I'll I'll put some notes. Um, when you guys are at a computer, you can you can look at these, uh, you know, look at these articles, and uh, make the decision for yourself. But that's my view. I uh, hope you guys have a great day. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Intelligent Investing Podcast with Eric Schlein. If you'd like to connect with Eric for questions, comments, feedback, ideas, or to inquire about being on the show, please contact Eric at intelligentinvesting at gmail.com. So, in the words of Charlie Munger, I have nothing to add.